What was it like setting dates for recording and making sure the required criteria were met? Setting days for recording has been one of the most challenging things about this film because of actors conflicting schedules, crews conflicting schedules, our conflicting schedules, and just trying to hurriedly get it filmed so that we can actually start editing it. it. I mean, it doesn't help that the communication between us and our actors and even some of like the camera guys that we have and stuff um, is awful. It's terrible. So It's terrible. So we're about to get everyone's numbers and making group chat. I'm with that. So because that is going to be easier because everybody's got their phone on them 24-7. So that's hopefully going to solve our problem. Do you feel that your teamwork allowed you both to succeed with this project? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd say so. Like, uh, I have the general idea of how I want it to look, and Colton knows how to turn what I want it to look like into the shots that make sense for the film. So, so like the, um, for example, the uh, chase scene. Um, most of those, all those shots are uh, Scott's ideas, except two. Um, the on the ground shot of mm -hmm. uh, the you. camera and the ending scene uh, where it's an up close, close of up. the face to really show the emotion and the build up of the scene in the chase. So, yeah, but I would definitely say where where my my failing is that I know what I want it to look like, but I don't know how to get it to look like that. Colton knows how to get it to look like that. So, and it's it's really good teamwork between oh, yeah. us to get there. So. Do you feel as though your character was consistent, and did you enjoy your role? Uh, yes, I, I loved my role. You know, it was a lot of stage time, a lot of camera time. And it was very enjoyable, especially the chase scenes, and you know, just acting with my brother and my buddy Nate, my buddy Eddie, and being able to be involved in the whole production. Um, Donnie being consistent, yeah, Donnie was pretty consistent throughout the whole film. I felt that if, you know, the situation that he was placed in, you know, he was very kind of panicked and very kind of, you know, just everywhere. So, I mean, he didn't really ever kind of change the character, I guess, I suppose. Even even in the end, you know, after the whole everything was resolved, he was still pretty shaken up about it, which is understandable because, you know, obviously, it's still something like that, you know, you're not sure what to do, right? As the main protagonist, did you feel your character fit that role? Yeah, I think I think my character fit that role a lot because you know, Donnie just has this, has a sense of innocence to him that, let's say, Garrett as Victor didn't have, you know, as you know, the villain of the show, or the movie. Uh, but Donnie kind of, you know, got himself into an unfortunate situation, was at the wrong place at the wrong time, and uh, yeah, I, I just felt like he really kind of fit that whole protagonist role because he did try to do what was best in the end, you know, save his buddy Nate, uh, but his buddy Ed, who was played by Nate. Do you feel as though your character was consistent, and did you enjoy your role? Um, I felt that Ed was kind of like a static character throughout the entire thing, but in his own way, he kind of got to have his own dynamic moments throughout it, so I enjoyed him pretty well. I got to have some kind of temper tantrums at the same time I got to be scared and calm at the same time. So overall, worked out pretty well. All right, what was your favorite scene as Eddie? Uh, the, the chase scene was fun, other than the fact that we had to run the same path so many times. I also really enjoyed doing the library scene because I got to be mad. And when you're when you're acting as a character, when you act as mad, it's one of the most fun things. All right. How did you get into your role, and do you feel like you accurately portrayed him? Well, the thing about Ed is, I feel like you don't really need to be able to have super strong acting skills to portray him really well. So I feel like I portrayed him pretty well uh, with the stuff I added in for him myself. Do you feel as though your character was consistent, and did you enjoy your role? Um, I enjoyed my role. Uh, consistent uh, at the beginning, no, but towards the end, when we got a, when I had a little more uh, pliable with this it, with him, I actually had to like do what I what I thought the character and the direction it can go, and I suggested it to Scott, and obviously he liked it, so I think it progressed into a more natural state. All right. Then what was it like playing as Victor and playing the roles of the antagonist in general? Um, it was enjoyable. Uh, the screen time was nice, and I know like there was times where I didn't have to come in here, which were nice with my schedule and stuff. So, other than that, I kind of enjoy playing the villain more than I like playing like. Do you feel as though your character was consistent, and did you enjoy your role? Well, uh, on the basis of consistency, my character wasn't necessarily consistent in the sense that he's a, kind of like a double agent. Um, other than that, he was pretty consistent, but the fact that I was serving for 
two different things was the fact that it wasn't necessarily consistent all throughout because of that. And also regarding my role as a character, it was very enjoyable because I was I had some screen time and I was able to, you know, really get to know my character as I was acting everything out. What was your reaction when asked to serve as one of the government agents? Well, at first it was kind of threw me off because I was, I was like, well, I don't really have <laughs> much experience acting other than theater. Um, and other than that, I've been like a supporting role. And then like as a government agent, you have to carry this so, like this confidence because you have to know what you're doing. And you have to be able to perform on the spot like that, even though it's just a character. You have to sort of carry like all the confidence and everything that you have as an actor and put transfer all of that into your character. Were there any roadblocks when it came to editing that would have made things difficult? Yeah, probably when people during filming of say scenes such as when Garrett was walking out of the town hall in Valparaiso they named several scenes on the uh, clacker, the thing that they named several scenes the same, so it made it pretty difficult to put the video and audio together t when matching up scenes. Do you feel like you were given good footage and audio to work with? Yeah, I'd say I was given pretty good footage. I mean, considering that we're all a bunch of high schoolers, I mean, you've got some pretty good work, honestly. It's comparative to a college project, honestly. So, yeah. What was it like working as makeup for the movie? Um, it was really fun. I did, I made fake blood, and then I had to bruise Nate, which was pretty fun. That was easy, it was good. It, I, I, yeah, I just enjoyed a lot. Um, favorite part was probably when I had to get under the table to do Garrett's blood, like his shooting scene, and I was like under the table, and the blood was getting all on my hand, and it was so sticky. And then I was like really nervous because I had to like do it at a certain time, and it had to be perfect. And then I got it, and then it was all good. And then he was a bloody mess, like yeah. For the blood, I had like a big thing of corn syrup. I had water, like just as much water as necessary and then a bunch of like food coloring like red food coloring and me and my mom made it that night and we like had to stir it and then keep adding water and then try to push it through the thing because then it would be too thick or too thin and so then we had to just mess with it so yeah it was, it was a fun time was there any difficulty selecting a track yes there is um and some of the scenes i have to go within, like I have to go inside the track and mute certain instruments and put certain instruments back on the track and like separate different instruments from a second track and like mix them together. So doing all of that and putting it together was actually very hard and I still have to do it, so, but I'm getting through it. We heard you singing from time to time. Did you really enjoy your job? I, listen, I like to sing. Yes, I did enjoy my job. I wrote the song and I sang it and produced it, which is a dream of mine. But yeah, it was easy and I loved doing that, so that was cool. My first feature film with a song, or a short film with a song. What was your job exactly? Um, my job was like in the beginning of like, when you seen like behind the scenes, like the person that like clacks the thing when they say like blah, 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 and then they clack it, that was my job. And that helps line up the scenes for after editing. And then I was also editing stuff as well. I did, I did the um, interrogation scene, most of the editing for that, and then, and then I'm doing the library scene right now. Uh, was there any incidents that happened? Oh, well there was the one uh, where we were like practicing our setup, so we had, for the interrogation scene, we had uh, the pole right there and it had the little lamp hanging above it. Well, Crouch is like acting like the interrogator, so he stands there and he grabs the light and pulls it like right in my face. And so what happens is the whole pole just comes down. It's like about to hit me in the head, but uh, thank God Jake was there. You know, yeah. Jake he, stopped he, it. he caught it. Luckily, no one got injured. Yeah, not too I mean, just knowledge. emotionally, but you know, not nothing yeah. physically.
We heard you had trouble with audio from the camera. What exactly happened? Um, well, we were using an Osmo DJI at one point, and that Osmo has a fan and, in it. And it was very loud. It was yeah, super loud. Yeah, it was so very high. loud. Yeah. Yeah, and it, uh, then every shot that we took with that, you know, the audio guys can hear it, and it just, we just ended up taking it off. Yeah, and using the Sony. So. Yeah, we switched cameras. How was it to capture these shots? Uh... It was a bit difficult on some of them, like the chase scenes and stuff like that, because yeah, on those we had to, I, yeah, yeah, I had to run backwards on some of them, and I, I needed his help with uh, spotting me and things like that. Did you run into any problem getting sound? Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, in uh, audio, other audio in interferences would happen. So like it would be uh, like a train, uh, church bells. Yeah, and especially the last scene where uh, I had no idea where to place the boom, so I was staying super far away from where the scene was actually happening. So then we got terrible audio from that, but it's fine. It still sounds fine. How did you deal with any background ambience in public locations? Um, we mostly did that post production. So what you would do is you go into the sound file and actually like either uh, put a fade on it or get rid of it completely using like an audio wave uh, editing. Tool. What was it like working with your students as both the supplier of equipment and their supervisor? Working with the, the kids on this project was fantastic because we were able to use professional grade equipment and go out and actually shoot a short film using that equipment, giving them the experience of having to check out the gear, haul it to different places, set up in remote locations, and all of the challenges that go with it, I think it was a great learning experience. How was it being the secret agent in the chase scene? Did you plan for this or was it a surprise? It was definitely a surprise. Um, you have to roll with the punches when this things, these kind of things happen, but when we have a casting issue, sometimes you have to step in and take care of things. And uh, it was definitely a surprise, but it was a lot of fun. And it was a lot of fun to see uh, you guys take charge and to me step back into a different role and not be the person in charge and to give you guys that authority. It was very great to see you guys take care of that, take control, and really make this project your own. Do you feel like your students accomplished their goal in making an interesting short film? I think my students had a great time with this short film and yes I think they had a great from the start to finish from the pre-production process when we scripted as a group and everybody contributed and put uh, forth ideas uh, to the storyboards to the shooting and the post-production every is working as a team and I believe that we are going to be successful in creating this short film. <laughs> um, we got all this done. Thank you very much. This was the big like oomph right. shoot it. The, the, rest of the, the issue is you guys didn't cafe. know this. More this manager. is going to be the second biggest shot. Guys, guys. over the spring break, <laughs> there was a power outage at the high school. Uh -oh. We left the computer on. All the footage that we had from the... You're pulling an April Fool's joke, it's April Fool's yeah. Day. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. That doesn't That's make sense. You. It doesn't make sense. Anyways, you see what it's saved. It's a computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's on the hard drive. Scott, Scott was waiting for Scott it. knew it. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> it's on the hard drive. That doesn't make sense. At first I was like, no. <laughs> you should have been like, I spilled water on the hard drive. That would have made more sense. I was legit on it. Dragon did it. They kill the sky if that's what happened. Well, good work, everybody. I'm super proud of what we did today.
<laughs> Cut! I'm so sticky. <laughs> Out of sticks! That look good! We only